Hi there, it's Dr. Jim. Thanks for stopping by for some, uh, some good information. I'm always researching, um, always, I'm a Capricorn, I can't help it. I'm always climbing and climbing, climbing the mountain. Uh, the quest, <laughs> my quest, un, unending quest for information. Um, and in doing so, uh, my topic today with you is mental health and well-being of healthcare professionals, something that I'm very interested in, have been for a long, long time. But specifically, I'm looking at problems, causes, and how self-care, and that's a big takeaway from this video and the article, if you look online, if you like to read, print it, share it, email it to your friends, your colleagues, if they have mental health and well-being issues that you're concerned about, everybody does. Um, but I look at specifically how self-care can make a big, big difference. And I, I'm telling you the honest to truth, honest to goodness truth, I'm living proof of self-care. And, um, I probably work 15 hours a day, every day, Saturdays included. And unless my family's dragging me, kicking and screaming sometimes on Sundays, and I know I shouldn't. So here's a good introduction to what I'm talking about. A problem that is hiding in plain sight. The biggest problems usually do occur right in front of our eyes and under our noses. That has existed for decades, if not longer, is the deleterious effects of working in healthcare on one's physical, mental, and emotional health. And guess what? It took a pandemic that we have not seen for over 100 years to pull the cover back, to push the curtain aside on all the pain and the stress and the suffering and the exhaustion experienced by countless healthcare professionals, not only across our nation here in the United States, but around the world. And I know we have viewers from around the world, so hi there. Keep e emailing me. I love to hear from you all the time. Jim at CollinsLearning.com is the easiest email. I have a bunch of emails, but that's an easy one. So this short video and this short article, if you take a look at the article, is going to provide factors contributing, uh, contributing to diminished health, mental health and well-being, and then ways to improve them for professionals who are working in healthcare, hospitals, mental behavioral health, nursing homes, assisted living, hospice, home health, you name it. Healthcare's toll. I don't want to get too negative, but we all know it's rough. I mean, going to medical school, so many people drop out because they can't take it emotionally or mentally. Um, healthcare's toll on mental health and well-being. What do, what do we mean by that? Well, it's well known that the rigors of medical and nursing school can bring about changes in one's physical and emotional status. After working for several years in the field, the hours, stressors, challenges all add up and affect professionals in a variety of different ways. Now, I'm not taking a cookie cutter and saying it, it applies to everybody because a lot of people deal with things. They have great coping mechanisms. They're, they're well studied. Um, they have resilience. They let things go. Others don't talk and they hold it in and blah, blah, blah. So everybody's different. I get that. And of course, okay. So some will experience musculoskeletal injuries, very common by the way, among um, direct care staff, while others face symptoms like depression and anxiety eating disorder, so on and so forth. It's not uncommon that some healthcare professionals may become burned out, suffer from extreme moral distress, as well as post-traumatic stress disorder, particularly after a pandemic or during the pandemic, to be honest. Regardless of the type of negative experiences one might feel um, or deal with, good people in the helping profession may also need help to maintain meaning and drive in an ever-changing world of healthcare. So let's look at some causes of poor mental health and well-being. And unfortunately, there is no shortage of issues, problems, or risks to mental health and well-being that just naturally occur in healthcare, in that space. Some may say that these are just hazards uh, that come along with the job. 
And to an extent, I would say they're, they're right. The problem is that, of course, we're going to deal with daily stressors and things that happen on a daily basis. We get, our, get in our car and we go home, right? And then let it go. Go back tomorrow. We have a new day, a new dawn, a new day. The problem, though, the problem is chronic exposure to stressors and various factors that healthcare professionals deal with over long periods of time. Some features of healthcare um, that cause professionals to experience poor mental health, emotional health, a decline in well being include the following. But it's a short list. I could go on with this, but we're just going to get to the most common causes of poor mental, emotional health and well-being for the healthcare professional. Working short, being understaffed, heavy workloads, patients, residents, clients are more medically complex than before. Lots of comorbidities, long shifts, some, uh, sometimes being mandated to stay through another shift, a high pace, a fast pace, ethical dilemmas, moral injury, lack of managerial support, changing regulations, policies, procedures, corporate restructuring, and a lack of safety in the environment. So the list goes on. Healthcare is such a large, complicated, and ever-changing entity that a multitude of stressors will be present most often than not. And depending upon the professional's coping skills, levels of re uh, resilience, and so on, a lot of negative outcomes can take their toll, and especially over time. And that's what we're really talking about, chronic. So in my article, I asked the question, self-care, anybody? Because self-care really is extremely important. And, and that is a massive takeaway from this video and the article, by the way. Self-care may be an afterthought, though, for a lot of healthcare profi professionals because who are they focusing on more than themselves? Everybody else, right? They take care of their patients and their clients, their residents, and sometimes they don't think about taking care of themselves whatsoever. Okay. But why do healthcare professionals do this? Um, a, they just forget, you know, human error. I take care of a lot of people. I have bills to pay. I got to put gas in my car. I have to take the kids to basketball practice or piano practice or whatever. They forget. Some, though, think that they can battle through these issues and nothing's going to harm them. Superman, superwoman, complex. Some fake it till they make it. <laughs> or they just say, suck it up, and everything will be fine. Others may ignore their own needs because they might feel guilty for taking care of themselves, or they might feel selfish for putting the focus back on them. And of course, that's a cognitive error. We have to take care of ourselves, or we're useless to everybody else. Some, though, may fear judgment. Um, and they, they might be afraid of others, you know, their colleagues thinking that they're weak or they're vulnerable or whatever. Okay. Self-care I'm telling you right here and right now is the first line of defense against stress. So before seeking professional help, before relying on prescription medications. Although you might need both, you might need all three, self-care, seeking a professional, staying on your meds, that's fine. But let's not forget, self-care should not be forgotten as a real solution to major problems. And all, it, it, it all starts with this, a self-check-in. I'm checking in with myself. How do I feel? What are my thoughts like? Am I more negative or positive? What are my stress levels like right now? And am I coping well? How are my coping skills and mechanisms? Do I have intrusive thoughts? Do I hate this place? Do I hate the people that I work with? Or do I feel blessed and do I feel fine and full of energy? Do I have uncontrollable 
emotions? Do I become angry more than not? Do I become um, someone who uh, feels guilty more than I normally should? So it's just a self-check-in. Hey, it's like, you know, lifting the hood of your car and checking things out. You know, we need to lift the hood every now and then and see heart, head, soul, and everything else, um, and body, how are we doing? So it, it can also be as easy as developing a keener sense of, well, of awareness, self-awareness, regarding your own internal state of being in the following areas. So mental check mark here. Do you take a break when you need one? Or do you feel guilty or you're just too busy? Do you maintain a healthy diet? Okay, on a scale of 1 to 10, how healthy is that diet? Do you stay well hydrated? Do you set limits and boundaries for yourself? Are you okay in saying no every now and then and when it's absolutely necessary? Do you exercise? Do you exercise on a regular basis? Do you feel good about your physical shape and your body and your health? Are you getting good quality sleep? Do you allow some time for emotional processing? That's so important. The beginning of the day, the end of the day, even a couple times during the mid middle of the day, I, I will, I'll reflect, I'll, I'll, I will. As a matter of fact, one of my um, colleagues here in the office thought that I turned all the lights out and that I went into this deep meditation prayer session by myself. I didn't. Um, I just turned the lights out, I think, because maybe the, the, the lights were straining my eyes or something along those lines. But that's not a bad idea, okay? And do you practice mindfulness or or deep 